Welcome to Fam Church Online. My name is Claire and I'm so glad that you're tuning in with us this morning. We would love to connect with you and if we haven't had the chance to do so yet, please text welcome to the number that appears here at the bottom of the screen. We'll send a digital connection card to your phone. You can fill that out and send it back to us and we'll send you a gift in the mail just for connecting with us. As always, we hope Pastor John's message really speaks to your heart this morning. And if you would love to connect with people in our community, you can do so down below in the comments. Thanks, Fam Church, for staying so faithful in your giving. Remember here at Fam Church, there are four ways that you can give. You can give through our app, you can give through our website, you can text your amount, or you can mail it by snail mail. However you decide to give, I want to thank you once again for staying faithful in your giving. It's helping us do ministry, and we're eternally grateful. Thank you. God bless. of this world, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, we exalt you, Lord. Build us, Lord, into who you want us to be, Lord. Make us your church, Lord.
Good morning, Fam Church and everybody. So glad to see you. Welcome to our Sunday morning church service or whenever it is that you're viewing this. Thank you for taking the time to check us out. Um, boy, I tell you what, you sure are missed here at Fam Church. The song that we just, that you just saw, Built My Life, was recorded here uh, in the uh, sanctuary at Fam Church just last week. And so we thought we'd share that with you to let you know, hey, we're worshiping the Lord and Again, we're not trying to pressure you to come on back, but we're just letting you know that we're here and we're worshiping the Lord, and boy, you are sorely missed. And so um, whenever you're comfortable to come back, come on back. We're two weeks in uh, to a return to regular services, a regathering to our regular services. And uh, I tell you what, the last two services, the last two weeks have been really, really great. And so whenever you're ready to come back, we're ready to receive you. Let me remind you that we've got all of the things um, in store to make you feel safe from hand sanitizer and masks to social distancing. Whatever it is you need to feel comfortable, we're here to provide that for you whenever you're ready to return. So we're going to have a good time. And I tell you what, we miss you. We can't wait to see you. And so God bless you. And um, hey, be blessed of the Lord. Can't wait to see you. Well... Again, I'm very, very grateful that you're taking the time to, to check this out. And, um, you know, we were going to record the message for you all on Sunday morning for us in the church. But, again, I want you to know that I'm not going to give you leftovers. I want you to know that we're recording this specifically for you. And so, um, and again, what you hear on Sunday morning or whenever it is you're viewing this is the same sermon that we're going to be preaching, that I'm going to be preaching on Sunday morning here in the church. So, as a matter of fact, you're actually getting it first. And the people who are gathered here live are getting it second and third, depending on what service they're, they're uh, attending. But please know that we're giving you our red-letter best. We want to give you uh, everything that we've got. We don't want you to feel that you're getting leftovers. And so, um, today, be blessed because I am thinking of you and I'm, I'm grateful to know you. And I'm honored that you're taking the time to allow me to speak into your life. Well, with those few things out of the way, let me address some things that I see and that you see in our culture, things that are happening just about every day. You know, the last few weeks, I've just had to unplug from all the stuff that I see in our culture because if you take too much time to digest that stuff, it just... It drives you mad. It just, it's infuriating, it's sad, it's depressing, and you just really can't uh, digest that much of that stuff because, again, it makes you a different person. And our eyes are supposed to stay upon the Lord. But in the middle of all of that, I think there is some things that we as a church can learn. And what I see happening in our world today and in our culture and what's going on is that we live in a society, we live in a culture that is constantly offended. People everywhere you look, everyone is offended by something. Uh, it, doesn't regard, it, it doesn't matter how small the offense is or how large the offense is. Everybody is offended at something. And it's all in our culture and people are ate up with it and they... That idea of offense has actually crept into the church. I can fully expect people who don't know Jesus, okay, whose heart has not been touched by the grace of God, I can fully expect those people to run around in constant offense. I expect it. I, that's what they do. And it's because their heart has not been touched by the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. When your heart has been touched by the grace and the mercy of Jesus, the hope of the Christian faith is, is that you will not take offense to things as easily as people who are in the world do. And again, we see it every time we turn our TV on. There are people who are offended by everything. And unfortunately, that mindset has crept into the church. 
And now we have people in our church who are constantly offended too. Let me speak to the church because that's where I feel like my ministry is mostly geared towards. Church folks, people of Fam Church, people who are viewing, please listen to me. Don't take offense. It's simply not worth it. To walk around in a perpetual state of offense will lead you into places that will make you the most bitter, unforgiving, self-righteous person that has ever walked the face of the earth. We in the Christian faith cannot have at our disposal those things such as bitterness, unforgiveness, and self-righteousness. Those things are the antithesis of the Christian faith. So let me challenge you today to take some time for some self-evaluation to see if perhaps you are a person who is constantly being offended. And if you are, let me challenge you to take that offense to the cross. Because at the end of the day, and I, I want this to be crystal clear to you, and I'm going to say it multiple times in our time together so that you'll understand uh, where I'm coming from today. At the end of the day, offense is nothing more than the bait of Satan. Let me say that again. Offense is nothing more than the bait of Satan. When you take offense, you are taking the bait of Satan. When you take offense, it's the same thing as if a fish who's swimming in the water sees bait hanging down, okay, and it may be a worm or a cricket or some sort of um, lure that has been manufactured by someone who makes lures, and a fish is swimming in the water, and they look and they see this particular piece of bait, and they don't see the hook. They don't see the line that it's attached to a rod and reel. They don't see any of that. What they see is the bait. And when you take the bait of offense, you are literally taking the bait of Satan because that is where he wants you. He wants you to be offended because he knows that ultimately offense leads to bitterness, self-righteousness, unforgiveness, those things are going to be stored up in the heart of a person who is always constantly in a state of offense. And as I said, that stuff is in the church now, and people are constantly being offended. Listen, I, it's gotten to the point to where pastors are very, very careful about what they even preach because they're afraid. I'm, I'm giving you an insight into the pastor's mindset now. Pastors are even afraid to preach truth because they are afraid that when they speak truth that there is going to be an offense and people are going to take offense to the truth and they're going to leave. And when they leave the church, they're going to take their pocketbook with them. And so pastors are scared to death to speak truth. And let's be honest, in our culture too, we don't want to hear truth. And so there are forces at work in our culture nowadays who are constantly trying to stamp out truth because truth is so offensive. And so there are people who want to speak truth, who know the truth, who are being silenced from speaking the truth because they're afraid they're going to be labeled as something and therefore they're just going to be quiet. Well, I'm going to tell you, in, in a culture like that, the people who speak truth have got to speak truth even more loudly. The people who speak truth have to speak more truth. And I'm not saying that people who speak truth should do that in an arrogant manner because we have people like that in the church as well. We have people in the church who want to speak truth and who want to be deliberately offensive. And that's not the Christian mindset either. 
Because we know that a hard or a harsh word only brings as a benefit more harsh words. The scriptures are clear that we are supposed to have a soft answer. A soft answer turns away wrath. And so there are people who want to be provocateurs in the Christian community who want to shout truth so loud that they become arrogant and that they become boastful and they become rude with it. And let me be honest with you and crystal clear, that has no place in the Christian community either. So we are not to shrink back from speaking truth because it's offensive, but we're also not supposed to use truth as a bludgeon or a hammer and beat people with it. Let truth be truth by all means, but let's don't be arrogant in the truth. As the book of Romans tells us in chapter 13, love is not boastful. So if you've got love in your heart and if you've got Jesus in your heart, certainly you've got love. So let's don't take offense and let's don't be the one who gives offense either because we're being too arrogant and rude and self-serving when we do. But having said that, the Christian community has got to um, get a little bit more strength in their faith because they are being too offended too often. And so we have to be careful in the Christian community that we don't take offense because we can't allow that stuff to take root in our churches. And so, as I said earlier, when you take offense, you are essentially taking the bait of Satan. And when you take the bait of Satan, let me remind you, bitterness is coming your way. Unforgiveness is coming your way. You're going to be self-righteous. It's going to come your way. What I mean by that is you're right and everybody else is wrong. And so you have to be careful when you take offense. Don't take offense. I believe that the Christian church should be the least offensive people on the face of the planet. What are we to take offense to? We've got Jesus as our king. The world is going to be doing exactly what the world's going to do. If they're going to tear down statues, let them tear down statues. Listen, my hope and faith and trust is not in a statue. My hope and faith and trust is in Jesus Christ. So let people do, the world is going to do whatever it is that they do. I'm not going to be offended by that because I know that offense is the bait of Satan. And then when I take that offense and I start shouting and raising my fist, why are they tearing down statues in our culture? There's going to be a root of bitterness that's going to spring up inside my heart, and I'm going to be a bitter, unforgiving, self-righteous person. And I'm here to declare to you today, I'm not going to be that guy. And I want to challenge you. Don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Don't take the bait of Satan. Now, I gave you the illustration of a fish in a pond or in a stream, and they see bait and they do not see the hook. Let me tell you exactly and be more concrete so that you'll understand where this idea of offense comes from. The Greek word for offense is actually this word called scandalon. Scandalon. It's where we get our English word scandalous. Scandalous. The word picture there is the stick that is underneath a trap. Have you ever seen an old movie or an old uh, television show where someone builds a trap to like to snare a bird and they'll put food underneath the trap and there's a stick there and they tie a string to the stick and they go off into the bushes and they lay in wait for a bird to come in to maybe eat some berries that they've got underneath the trap and then when the person is over in the woods, watches that bird come in the trap, they pull the stick out, the trap falls on the bird, and they've caught the bird. In the Greek language, the word offense, which is scandalon, is that stick. It's the stick that ensnares you. It's the same thing with a hook. It ensnares you. All you see is the food. All you see is is the worm on the hook. All you see are the berries underneath the trap. Let me go a step further. 
Many of you know what a mouse trap is. You take a mouse trap, the little stick that hangs off, you know, you put peanut butter on the mouse trap, you fold the mouse trap back, you take that one little stick and you stick it underneath the trap, and the trap is set for the mouse. Mouse comes out in the night when everybody goes to bed. He sees the peanut butter, doesn't see the mouse trap. He sees the peanut butter, and he goes to the peanut butter. And when he goes to the peanut butter and starts nibbling on the peanut butter, that little stick that sets the trap, okay, he triggers that, and y'all know what happens. The trap is sprung. He's caught in the trap, and he dies. That little stick that you set, that scandalon, that's the stick. That's what the Lord says. When you take offense, you're getting trapped in there, and it's going to get you. It's called the bait of Satan. Leave it alone. Christian brothers and sisters, leave it alone alone. It's simply not worth it. And as I said, man, it's in the church. People can't even speak truth in the church anymore. I mean, I can be speaking. There's been people who have gotten up out of sermons and left because I've, spoke, because I've spoken truth. I didn't speak it in a harsh way. I didn't speak it in a mean way. I didn't call them out personally. I just simply spoke truth. And Christian people were so offended by the truth, get this, that they actually get up and leave. Well, I'm here to tell you, the Christian community cannot have that in our lives. Can't have it in our culture. We can't have it in our community. If there are going to be people who are going to take offense... And who are going to take the bait of Satan? Let the world do it. Let the church be filled with love and grace and mercy. Not anger and bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness and self-righteousness. Let all of that stuff go. And accept Christ. Accept the love of God. And let all that other madness go. Now our time is running short. And I want to share a couple of scripture verses with you before we go. One of the scripture verses that I want to share with you is found in Proverbs 18 and in verse 19. And the word of the Lord says this, a brother offended, listen at this. And we know in the Christian community a brother is someone who is not necessarily blood kin, but we're brothers in Christ or sisters in Christ. So a brother or sister offended is more unyielding than a strong city. Don't take the bait of Satan. You will, you will become so arrogant. You will become so unyielding. You will become so filled with bitterness. You will become so self-righteous, arrogant, unforgiving. You're right and everybody else is wrong. I'm telling you, that is, that's exactly what Satan wants you to do. Repent of that. Move from that. Don't let it ensnare you. It's simply not worth it. Let me give you one more scripture verse. It's also found in the book of Proverbs. One chapter forward, chapter 19, verse 11. It says this. Good sense, sober-mindedness, good sense makes one slow to anger. In other words, don't take offense. Be slow to those things. Don't take the bait of Satan. Be easy. Be slow to anger. And listen, it is his glory to overlook an offense. Let it go. Let it go. You see something that's shiny there and you think you ought to take it? It's simply not worth it. Don't take the bait of Satan. Don't get into what this culture is begging you to get into, which is to constantly stay in a state of offense. It's not worth it. It's gut rot. It will lead you into places that you do not want to go. Lastly, 
And I'm going to close with this. The Scripture verses in the New Testament are crystal clear. In Matthew 18, and I speak to those of you who do and who have been offended. Listen to me. The Bible is clear. Matthew 18 lines this out perfectly. If you are offended today and you're a believer in Jesus and you've been offended and you've been toting around uh, this attitude of offense, someone has offended you and it's eaten you up on the inside. Listen, don't get on Facebook and broadcast it. That's not what the Bible tells you to do. If you are in a state of offense today and someone's offended you, the Bible is crystal clear. You go to the one who has offended you, and you go to them privately, and you say, hey, look, this happened. I was offended by that. Let the other person in Christ explain why, they're, why they did what they did. I guarantee you 99.9999% of the time, the other person has no idea that they've offended you. They're off living life. They're happy, content. You're the one who's having your guts eaten right out of you because you can't get over the offense. Go to that person. Get the offense behind you. And when you do get the offense behind you, don't ever, ever take the bait of Satan again. Well, receive that word today. I trust it's a blessing to you. I'm telling you. It'll help you live a better life. Well, I'm going to bless you. There's a wonderful set of scriptures that are found in the Old Testament. I love to bless you at the end of each message. Receive this today. The word of the Lord says this. May the Lord bless you. May God keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you. And may he give you peace. Well, Receive the blessings of God today. They're yours. Can't wait to see you. We're here when you do get back. So long. <laughs>